Three Body Technology have asked me to have a look at the Kirchhoff EQ, which is a 32-band EQ that they claim has been purposely built for all critical professional applications. It's a tough market, as we already have the likes of FabFilter Pro Q3 and DMG's Equilibrium that have seriously lasted the test of time. So first off, the Kirchhoff offers 15 different filter types, but I think the only filter that the competition doesn't share, and do please correct me if I'm wrong so I can edit this out, is the Sword filter which has a sharper slope than a bell and is specifically designed to dig out resonances. Now a feature that not every EQ has is continuously variable slopes. You'll notice that in say FabFilter Pro Q3, the slopes are in fixed dB per octaves, where in this you have more control over the slope. Now for this next feature, you can tell that they have definitely taken inspiration from Equilibrium and Tone Boosters, as they have incorporated 32 filter types modelled from historic vintage EQs. The developers state that every EQ type specifically matches the original hardware they measured, which seems to be an SSLE and G, Neve, Sontech, and another three that I'm not entirely sure of. In the description of this video, I will leave a blog post from the developer discussing how the circuit modeling works in Kirchhoff, which I hope gives you guys an insight into the methods and what they are trying to project with these analog style filters. And they have also coded in what they call robust Nyquist matched transform, which essentially means that all of the filter types will not cramp near the Nyquist frequency, which really for me on any digital EQ should really be a minimum requirement in my eyes. But we still see analog emulations and even some digital EQs cramping, so it is still good to know. And as we are talking about the dynamic functions of the EQ, it's probably a good time to explain some of the functions, which include attack and release settings for every band, which is something that FabFilter doesn't offer, but other EQs like Waves F6 do. There is also a two-way threshold, where the below stage works as an expander or upwards compressor, and the above stage acts as a compressor or upward expander. Now, for this next feature of the Dynamics, I actually had to email the developers because I couldn't really get my head around exactly what this function does. They have coded in what they call a detect and relative envelope detection, which they say is similar to an auto threshold function in some other dynamic EQs. I think it means in a standard dynamic EQ, the detection for the threshold will be triggered by the overall level of that band, where with this envelope detection feature, you can narrow the detection to a relative portion of the envelope of the whole clip instead of its absolute dB value. There is also a free button for both where you can also choose to set your detection from other frequency ranges. Now, when I asked them what the difference was between this and the auto threshold, they told me that it's not a simple on or off auto threshold button, as you can adjust the ratio of the relative portion detection smoothly using the relative parameter, and also use the onsets parameter to increase the ratio of transient envelope detection, so when the onset's at 100%, only transients are detected, which kind of makes the envelope detection work more like a transient shaper. If you want the detection to work like a standard dynamic EQ that uses common absolute detection, then all you need to do is set the relative values to 0%. If you set the relative value under 100%, then you will have a mix of relative envelope detection and absolute envelope detection. So in a nutshell, it's basically allowing you to fine tune your threshold detection, which in combination with the look ahead function for the attack, gives you more than enough dynamic refinement to do what you want to do. However, to be objective, I do personally find that FabFilter's auto threshold does work extremely well, but it is still nice to have the option for those guys that may perhaps feel that the auto threshold isn't resulting in a certain desired outcome. Now, there is another feature that concerns the dynamics, but I have to be extremely careful with this, as I have been speaking to developers about it, and many are sceptical as they believe the measurements shown via Plugin Doctor on their website are due to the settings and not what the developer states, which is that the Kirchhoff Dynamic EQ can achieve less harmonic distortion and noise compared to its rivals due to what they call a harmonic shifted envelope which, from what I can gather, kind of attempts to shift odd harmonics to even harmonics using a wave shaper that is coded to reflect energy back to odd time harmonics. 
which after the amp modulation shifts all those odd harmonics to even harmonics, which they state will reduce overall noise and distortion. Now, the only way that I could test this was to take a wide 1K bell and dynamically reduce it by 10 dB in both Pro Q3 and Kirchhoff and then print a sweep to see if we could pick up any noise or harmonics. So as you can see, the Fab Filter has picked up some harmonics and also a tiny bit of noise compared to the Kirchhoff sweep, which is actually relatively clean in comparison. But this is at like minus, <laughs> minus 150 dB. If we raise the spectrograph to around minus 100 dB, the noise and harmonics from FabFilter are barely visible, and as soon as you get to like minus 85 dB, minus 80 dB, which is where I'd argue things start to become slightly more audible, the noise and distortion have basically vanished. Now, even with these sweeps, I am not going to make any claims regarding audible quality, as the distortion and noise we are dealing with falls below the audible threshold from what I can see. So to me, it's more of a looks better on paper thing rather than an actual qualitative advantage. My sweeps do lean to suggest that the Kirchhoff is indeed cleaner in its dynamic EQ, but please, please bear in mind that harmonic distortion can be affected by attack and release settings. And without knowing the exact internal dynamic settings of the Pro Q3, I cannot fairly test the claims that the Kirchhoff is cleaner due to the harmonic shifted envelope. All I can say is that out of the box, using the default dynamic settings, the Kirchhoff appears to create less noise and harmonic distortion at very low levels. However, the Kirchhoff's harmonic distortion can be increased via faster attack and release settings. So it can get cleaner results, but only dependent on using certain compressor settings, which is the benefit of the Kirchhoff's added dynamic settings. So, just to be crystal clear, I cannot prove that the Kirchhoff Dynamic EQ would produce less noise and harmonic distortion than the Pro Q3 Dynamic EQ, as I do not know the settings of the Pro Q3 Dynamic EQ. The Kirchhoff can, from my tests, get cleaner results, but from what I can see, it is possibly more due to the Kirchhoff potentially having a slower attack and release setting out the box compared to fab fillers, but I cannot prove that either. However, if you want to have more of an understanding of the process behind the harmonic shifted envelope, I'll also leave a link in the description where the developer is talking about this feature in more detail. Fucking hell, <laughs> this stuff gets heavy pretty quick, does it? Fucking hell. So let's move away from the dynamics and have a look at the four main phase options in the Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff gives you options of minimum, analog phase, mixed phase, and linear phase. The only difference from some of its competitors is that the linear phase mode has five additional options where you can elongate the convolution, which they say will result in better resolution, but does come at the cost of higher latency and CPU usage. The mixed phase, I think I haven't seen before, but I haven't tried out every EQ, so I may be wrong. But what the mixed phase does is try to add a solution to the low-end pre-ringing issues found using linear phase EQ by allowing you to use minimum phase for your low frequencies and linear phase on your higher frequencies. You can choose from seven frequencies to gradually change the phase from. And for anybody asking, can this do the spectrum grab function like FabFiller? Yes, it can. You can click on the hand icon or simply double right click to switch to freeze mode, find the peaks via the red dots, and then hold and bring down your peak frequency of choice, and it will remain on the frequency as well, which is pretty handy when doing these sorts of cuts. For those who don't want the fab filter colour style theme, you can also adjust the GUI in the settings, which also includes some presets. The grayscale one is pretty handy for me as it helps you to see the spectral stuff better in the background. And another nice GUI feature from a workflow aspect is the band list which a few other EQs have. If you click the first button on the left, it will show the filters you've added as well as the controls. So you can arrange the filters in any order and personally, I like workflow additions like this as it just makes everything that bit quicker and easier to tweak or make changes. There is also a global stereo width option which can be found underneath the pan knob. I don't know how similar it is to the Brainwork stereo width, but nonetheless, it's a nice feature to add. There is also times 2 oversampling, which <laughs> I was a little confused about, as surely in my head there wouldn't be enough harmonics created by the dynamic section to require oversampling, but the developer has stated that oversampling may improve the frequency distribution 
of quantization noise caused by a precision limit. Whatever that means. But either way, they suggest that you try it out and if you hear no change or benefit, then you don't use it as it will cause more latency and CPU. When I attempted a null test with various filters doing various things, I actually found that the times 2 oversampling didn't result in a full null. So there is something going on, but not enough to show on the Pro Tools meters and only slightly makes an appearance on the Pro Q3 spectrograph. So, like, I very much doubt that there's an audible difference here, but there is a very, very, very slight change to the source. Now, another debatable feature is the 117-bit option, which they call ultra-high precision. Now, e even the developer themselves admitted that the improvements are subtle to some and near imperceivable to others. Like the oversampling, it's dependent on the source and whether you can actually hear an audible benefit. I attempted a null test with the EQ doing various things as I did the oversampling, and as you can see, I got a full null, which, <laughs> to be honest, I did expect. Many people have had the same result as me, however, the option is there for those that want to try it out now and then, but personally, I would say don't waste your CPU on it. So all in all, I think we can agree that the Kirchhoff is indeed a very powerful and tweakable EQ with more options than some of its competitors. However, all of those options can be a little bit daunting for guys that are just looking for a simple to understand EQ. That's really where FabFilter has held the crown for the longest time, is in its ability to do so much whilst making it all feel so incredibly simple. Many love FabFilter because it focuses on the most useful elements that mixers require and tailors its workflow towards the most general of users. Now, I'm not saying that Kirchhoff is any slower to use, but it does require more deep learning to get the most out of what it offers. Compared to FabFilter, it does offer more and the workflow is very similar to Pro Q3 with a few extra added options added in. And I have to agree that this added level of tweakability was much needed as we already have FabFilter and Equilibrium, which have both stood the test of time. The Kirchhoff needed to not only be comparable, but also offer more, which I do believe that it does in many ways. However, there are features that I think could be added to really make others consider a purchase. For example, Pro Q3's EQ match is an awesome feature, right? And although it doesn't get used as much in reality, it's still an incredibly powerful tool that has a lot of benefits. Another feature which I think could be integrated is the possibility of linking the EQ instances in order to establish frequency clashing very similar to what Sonic's Claro does. To me, if that feature was added into this EQ, it could be a game changer considering Claro has been so popular. I imagine they could probably find some way of using the envelope detection like a sidechain for another source so you could physically see where the frequency clashing is and then as the EQs are all linked, set the detection of your reduction to be dictated by the relevant portion of the most prominent source in that mix. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Currently, Kirchhoff is there at about the same price as FabFilter Pro Q3, which puts it in an incredibly comparable position. I think price-wise it is fair, considering it does offer more tweakability than Pro Q3, and is 40 odd quid cheaper than Equilibrium. If you already have Pro Q3 or Equilibrium, would I advise you to get Kirchhoff? No, because you've been able to make do with either and really you'd only want to replace your current EQ with this if you really are somebody who requires that extra level of tweakability. Kirchhoff is more of what I call your thinking man's EQ where you need to read manuals front to back to fully understand how you can utilise all of its functions and for many engineers this <laughs> probably would be EQ geek heaven, right, being honest. Either way, if you're in the market looking for a workhorse EQ, then Kirchhoff definitely delivers a high standard performance and is extremely competitive price-wise, so it's definitely worth a try. My name's Paul Third. Like the video, please, before you go, as it helps the channel grow, and consider subscribing for more plugin reviews. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you again next week.